Okay, people, so Corey Maccabee, a favourite of Sci-Fi London, has created a new joint, right? It is called Deep Astronomy and the Romantic Sciences. Now, Corey wrote and directed it. It is produced by um, Steve Holmgreen, Daryl Connors, and Richard Cole. It is executive produced by Corey Maccabee, associate produced by James Habaka, and co-produced by Franny Alfano. William Schwartkurt is on cinematography. Richard Cole edits the piece. Production design is Leslie Anton and Delphine Anton. Um, hair, makeup, prosthetics are Robin, Robin Frohunt and Meredith Adelaide. Production management is Wes Hurley and Chris Silansky. Uh, and our cast. Well, we have Rudy, played by Rudy De Jesus. Um, we have Grace. Now, the voice of Grace is handled by Meredith Adelaide. And the body of Grace is Mika Muzaka. We've got... Um, Rudy's friend, Mike, played by Chris Davis. Uh, there's also um, Corey Maccabee. He's in the piece. Um, there's MC, played by James Haybacker. Uh, Marshall Witherton, played by Matt Roper. Handsome Sebastian, played by Sebastian Galasso. Anton Baxter, played by Craig Anton. We have got um, Casey Edwards as a student. Future Driver, played by Joshua Wingana. Um, Burry Ved, played by Alexandra Travas. Uh, Daryl Connors, played by Daryl Connors. Ethan Collins, played by Ethan Collins. Jin Hammond plays a light donor admirator. Um, we've got Amy Maccabee as Earth Reimbursement Center prone. No voice. Um, the Blink Time admirator is Richard Cole. Susie Berlin is the emotional mathematics ad narrator. And Peter Barto is the Mars ad, elephant ad, and Earth Reimbursement Center ad narrator as well. Now, the gist is Grace is a robot incognito whose primary function is to represent humanity based on a generalization created from all social media and wireless communications, Rudy is her final test. Now, this, this is an interesting uh, film, right? It, you wonder, right? Because it, it, it's different. Right, we, we're in a crowded bar, but it's not really a crowded bar, right? It's just one of those ones where it's just like, okay, there's not a lot of people in this place, really, if we're thinking about it. If it's crowded, if it was actually busy, you wouldn't be here to hear the conversation, you know what I mean? And you've got a guy, he's with his friends, he comes over and he's like, ah, me and my friends think you're a robot, sits down. And this conversation starts with Grace. Now, she 
she's there, right? She's like, oh, I'm meant to be meeting someone, but we can have a conversation. And then this whole thing starts. Now, the film is intercut with these performances from Maccabee and these other, like, things that, you know, Grace talks about, right? Like the light donor uh, movement, the Mars, the um, Earth Reimbursement Center, Blink Time. So we have all of these things, like, cut in, and we have these talks by different people, right? So we've got um, Anton Cole. Anton Baxter even giving this, you know, the CEO of Blink Time giving this talk and Corey's giving a talk. And so we have all of this different information coming at you. And it is, it is very intriguing. It really is. You know, and it's like Blink Time isn't a thing, obviously. But you do find yourself pulled in to this whole explanation of it right it is really engaging and um yeah i enjoyed it right because we're hitting on kind of notions as well that are in everyday life you know like this whole thing of grace saying that she knows rudy right she knows everyone because she's read their to text their email, listen to phone calls. And she adamantly believes this is true. Rudy says, no, it's not true, right? Because I don't always say everything in a text message. She then says something that's very interesting, right? And you think, okay, now that's a point. Right, because if you're taking information like that, how does that help shape who someone is to someone? Right, but then you have this thing of, you know, when you think about all the information that is shared, all the, you know, comments on social media and in an email, it's not necessarily what someone is actually thinking, right? We put on these facades. You know, essentially we we could be robots like Grace, you know, saying that thing that has been regurgitated time and time again. But how true is that? How much do we believe that point? Hmm, right? And that's what I found very fascinating about this. Because it's just, you know. Grace giving a history of the bar they're in. So all of these things, how they're connected to it. Right? That's how we get all of this information. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Right? Rudy points out about a t-shirt. And if people really stand by the things on those t-shirts... Right, which again, do they? Right now, oftentimes people have statements or images that they're trying to, um, you know, make a point about. Right, there's certain slogans that people are like, you know, trying to be um, controversial. Right, they're thinking and making a stand on this point, but yeah. How much do they really stand behind that point? Right? I think you, you wonder about all of these things while watching this, you know? And although I will say, right, although the bar setting doesn't really feel like a bar setting, right? But it does feel like a conversation. Right, the, the frustration Rudy is having, you buy that, right? But then you buy all the other stuff he's saying to Grace and he, the way he's reacting to that information, the way he talks about his friends and all of this stuff. You know, you, you, you do 
get that, which I think is an interesting one because, like, what was told to, um, you know, the use in playing this role, right? Because he's talking to a robot. So it's not like you're talking to an, a, you know, a peer, right? Another human being reacting to the emotions you're getting back. So, I mean, what he gives us is very interesting because it works. It really does work, right? And you have to kind of, you know, you do believe he is talking to a robot, in fact. You know, so I thought that was really good. And then just all the other stuff we see, right? When um, Anton Baxter is talking about blink time, definitely comes off as one of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Basically a time shared cat, right? A smarmy motherfucker trying to sell you on something. You know, we, we, we have these interesting performances around this interesting dynamic and concept yeah I, I really did enjoy this uh so you know deep astronomy and the romantic sciences is having its uk premiere at sci-fi london right so head down right maybe you'll bump into Corey there yeah maybe you'll bump into some of the cast but you know, I think this is a very good example of the interesting stuff that you can come across at a film festival, and especially something like Sci-Fi London people. So, um, yeah, give it, give it a check, right? All the information on the website, obviously. So, uh, yeah, have a look. Go, go to the festival, right? Check out what else is there. And uh, I might see you there, people. I might see you there. All right? Peace.